Hello, good morning, everyone. Happy hump day this September 30th. Feel free to activate your microphones. Hello, good morning. Hope everyone's doing well. I hope your classes are going fine. Um, still haven't heard any one request um, some time to talk about some questions. If you have some doubts about other classes, um, how are your classes going, guys? Do you have any any questions that you might have come across in other classes that you want to discuss? For me, not sure. Thank you. Today, we're going to have a slight change of plans. Um, we're going to have our listening, our TOEFL listening tomorrow, Thursday, and also on Friday, okay, instead of today. So tomorrow at 8.15 and on Friday at 8.15, we'll have our TOEFL practice. Today, I want to give a little bit of extra time to do really just one activity uh, so that you have time to really reflect and uh, provide a detailed uh, description of the reflection that we'll talk about here a little bit later this morning. Um, but I want to give you some time uh, to do that. I also want to give you some time today in class to complete yesterday's assignment or even last week's, in some cases, uh, last week's assignment. Uh, if you have not uploaded the video from week five. I think group eight, I left a message today in Microsoft team for group uh, group eight. I think you have not uploaded your, your video from yesterday's assignment. Okay, so if you're in group eight, please go ahead and check that, upload it to week six. We're in week six now, so uh, try to upload that video uh, to week six so that I can complete yesterday's recording. All right, so I'm going to try to include your reading where we, pr we practiced our pronunciation, our intonation, our word stress uh, for, for the reading that we looked at yesterday. All right, so uh, group eight, please take a look at that and upload your video, please. All right. A lot of things going on in the news. We talked yesterday. We had a good song yesterday that spoke about President Trump. And yesterday, if you follow American politics, was the first presidential debate. Very interesting. If you're into politics, looks like a, a bunch of two uh, third graders up there fighting it out. Incredible. Incredible. But I, that's, that's, uh, that's the life, I suppose, huh? All right, so today what I'd like to do, I've, we've got a new song today. We've got a, a cool song that I want to share. And I think this was requested by Leo. Is Leo here with us this morning? Leo's not here yet? I don't see yes. Oh, you're here. Cool. Um, are, are there any words, any anything you want to share about this song? Does it uh, maybe it remind you of a personal past experience or any any comments about the song that you chose? Well, it's talk about for um, two people together when relationship is bad. And together is um, go to under the water when the decision is real bad. All right. In fact, the song is called Under the Water. I'm sharing my screen now, so hopefully you can see the lyrics. And I'll copy and paste the lyrics into the chat if you don't have them already. You want to pull up the lyrics to the song as you listen to the song. 
Anyone has anyone heard of this song before, or does anyone have any other comments before we listen to the song "Under the Water" by Aurora? Mm-hmm. As you look at the lyrics. Remember, we need to think about lyrics now. We need to think about the words of the song, both in terms of literal meaning and figurative meaning, right? So words can be really literal. That is, what they say is what they mean. Or they could be figurative. They could be metaphorical, satirical, right? They could actually have a different meaning, or an alternative meaning from the literal meaning. As you look at these lyrics, under the water we can't breathe, under the water we die, under the water there is no one watching. Right? I mean, you could say under the water we die. That could be literal, right? Because, of course, if we're under the water, we could die. We need oxygen, right? But more importantly, it probably has a figurative meaning, right? What what could be a possible figurative meaning to the phrase, under the water we die? And there's no one correct answer, but when you, maybe you've heard the song before, maybe you haven't heard the song before, but just by looking at the lyrics, What's an alternative meaning or a figurative meaning to the phrase under the water we die? What do you think? It's when the relationship is end, the cut off in the relationship. It's when a relation is so toxic and because of one, everyone falls. All right. Um, you're kind of cutting out there, and I, I think. Could could you try one more time to explain that? Just because the audio was cutting out on, on my end. Uh, okay. Um, it's when a relationship is very toxic, and because of one, everyone falls. It's the end or cut off in the relationship. All right. So yeah. So it could mean something. It could describe a relationship where maybe people are. The two are, maybe they've been, they've had a tough relationship, a difficult relationship for various reasons, right? Anybody else have any other ideas or thoughts about how this could be interpreted figuratively? Under the water we die. No. No, did you? Under the water, there is no one watching. Under the water, we are alone. All right, so whatever the meaning of under the water is, we die, no one's watching, and we are alone. How, what is that? How, what do you get from those words? What do you understand? What do you interpret? From under under the water, what else could that mean? Maybe the under the water is like mm, don't allow mm, be ourselves, and um, so that's like I don't know how to say asfixiante. Um, All right, you could suffocate. Maybe you're not being yourself. Uh-huh. Maybe yeah. you're being somebody that somebody else thinks you should be okay yeah. certainly yeah. that's that's a good comment right anybody else what's another possibility we're thinking now figuratively this is not a literal meaning anybody else Uh, 
Um, for example, the one that says under the water, we are alone. I understand like we don't need nobody else to survive or to be happy, I guess. Okay. So for you then, is this a positive thing? Under the water, we are alone? Do you think that's a, a good thing or a bad thing? Mm, well, I think 50-50. <laughs> okay. It's no bad and it's not something positive. Okay. Yeah, because if you look at the prior line, under the water there is no one watching. Do you think that's a good thing or bad thing? This is before the line, under the water we are alone. Is that a good thing? No um, one's watching. I think I think it's a good thing because for me it represents like um, nobody's watching you so you can do whatever you want and like act free. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So no one's watching. We can be ourselves, right? Without being criticized or judged by other people. All right. Then why do we yeah. jump in? Why do we why do we jump in under the water we die? So why do we jump in? What do you guys think about those lines? Why do we jump in? Well, um, the author of the song say when they are underwater is when their relationship is very bad and it is suffocating in both of them. And together it's jumping for under the water. All right. Have you heard of this expression? I'm going to type it into the chat. Have you heard of this expression, jump into a relationship? Has anyone ever said to you, don't jump into this relationship? What does that mean? Uh, you don't accept well, to be with that person. Sorry, can you it's say that again? <laughs> that... You don't accept to stay with this person. You don't accept to stay with a person? Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else have a, a way of explaining jump into a relationship? This is, a, this is figurative, right? It's not literal. We're not actually jumping up and down. It's a figurative. Anybody else have an idea about this phrase? Jump into a relationship. If somebody might say say to you, maybe your parents have said something, or or uh, a, a good friend might come up and say, hey, "Don't jump into this relationship with so and so with this person." Yeah, if one like, uh, for example, if someone cheated on her girlfriend or boyfriend, it, like, don't jump in, like. You are the amante. I don't know how to say amante. The lover. I don't know. The lover. Uh huh. All right. What What's a literal way of saying yeah. it? Yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah, you're on the right track. What are the the literal words that you could say instead of jumping into the jumping into a relationship? Don't broke up with that relationship, or don't. Don't 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 break up. Make broke make the, broke them up. Okay. I don't know how to say it. All right, you're cutting out a little bit. Uh, can you type it into the chat? I just want to make sure I understand what your last comment, uh, Tanya. Anybody yeah. else have another opinion or another way of saying? Jump into a relationship. What does it literally mean? Like, what would, how would you explain literally what the meaning of this phrase is? Because this is a big part of this song. Anybody else? Um, like a warning. Um, you, like, don't accept staying in that relationship. Right? It is, it is a warning. 
right? And to jump into a relationship is to enter into a relationship without thinking it through, without considering, without giving it much thought, right? Have you heard of the phrase, love is blind? Love is blind. That's another phrase. It's related, right? So if somebody says, don't jump into a relationship with Tom, they're, they're warning you. They're saying, be careful. Think it through. Do you know this person? Do you know yourself? Right? Before you jump into something, you can and you can jump into anything. They may say, don't jump into this major. Think it through. Consider what you want from the major. Right? Don't jump into moving to the United States. Right? Think about it. Right? Look at the pros and the cons, the, the good things about it and the challenging things, the difficult things. And then make a rational decision. Make a smart decision before you jump into, before you begin something. Okay, So jumping into something means that you haven't considered, you haven't thought about it very much. You're maybe going, uh, you're making a decision based on your emotions, maybe more so than... You're thinking it through logically, right? And trying to weigh the pros and the cons, the, the good things about something and the bad things about it, right? And with a relationship, it might mean maybe you don't know this person that well, but maybe you're in love with this person, you love this person, you really like this person, you want to jump into a relationship, right? It could be a romantic... Uh, mm -hmm. Teacher. Yes. And then I'm wrong. Because I told you is when you like separate two people who already are like dating. Right. I thought that. Yeah. Or and, I am mm -hmm. wrong or something like that. Right. So so break up. You you used it correctly. Break up. You might say something. You might let's say that your best friend is going out with someone and you don't like this person. You could say, Hey, you should break up with this person. Right, and this oh. is this is the phrase "break up." Break up is a phrasal verb. It's a figurative. It's a, it's a idiomatic. It's a slang. Break up means to separate, to end a relationship, and it's usually a romantic relationship. Right? We we don't break up with our friends. We usually break up with our uh, a romantic relationship that we have with someone. Okay, so you might say, hey, you jumped into that relationship. I don't like this person. He's not good for you. You should break up with this person. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. So, jumping in like when you don't think enough to, to get in, in a relationship. Exactly. Like, you yeah. are like, I like, like the basic, but you don't know them, like, literally, like, how they are. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah, no, deeply. That's right. Yeah, because maybe you're attracted physically to this person, but maybe uh, intellectually, right? Or, or maybe the person just doesn't treat you well, right? You might jump into a relationship and then later say, no, this person's not right for me. I'm going to break up with this person, right? Yeah. And then that person goes and cries to someone else. <gasps> she broke up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. So that's break up and to jump in. Those are two really good uh, phrasal verbs. They are much, they're very much related, but slightly different in meaning. All right, let's listen to the song. Let's get this, get this party started.
Teacher. Yes. What it seems? Sorry, can you repeat that? E N G. What it seems? S I N G. Oh, seen. Oh, let me. Let me look for in the letter. Sing S I N G. Ah, S. No. S I N S. Ah, sins. Sins. What are sins? Wash away your sins. This is a common uh, expression. Wash away your uh, sins. Wash away sins. What does that mean? Like the. Yeah. Right, a sin. Anybody else? What's a like? How would you explain without translating it? What? What? How would you explain a sin? It's when what? Or how would you say it? When you're afraid. When you're afraid. Yeah. Hmm. If I tell you. Uh, let's see. What's what would be stealing is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Son como pecados, no? Mm -hmm. How would you say it in English? Mm, I don't know. You're correct, but how would you say it in English? Like, how would you paraphrase it? Don't think of just one word. How would you explain it? Yeah, you're wrong. Say again? You're a mistake. A mistake, mistake or it's even it's even harder or more serious than a mistake because a mistake might be unintentional. Right? Uh, right, a sin is intentional. It's like you are thinking you know what you're doing. And you're doing something wrong. That's a sin. You're doing something you should not do. It's morally or even legally, in some cases, wrong. Right? So a sin, wash away your sin. Wash away is slang. It's idiomatic. Wash away means to remove the bad things that you have done. Right? When you, okay. If you're a Catholic... You go to confession, and you talk to the priest. You confess yeah. to the priest, so he will wash away your sins. He will. He will do a penance, right? And you, will, they will wash away your sins. Teacher, if mm -hmm. for example, for example, I wake up late, so I get in the class like eight, ten. So I, I haven't like listened to song. And I already listen it. And when the girl is singing the part, why do why do we jump in? It's like uh, she's already in the relationship, so like she's arrepentida. I don't know how to say arrepentida. Yeah, it could be. It, she could be reflecting. Say, why do I keep making this mistake? Yeah. I keep jumping in. And we yeah. right now, this is the artist. With the lyrics, right? So there's a lot of different interpretations. But one could be the artist is saying, why do we collectively, right? Why do we make keep making these mistakes? We jump in. Maybe it's a relationship that is bad for, you know, for a number of reasons, right? Why do we jump into relationships? Why do we keep making these mistakes? Right? And yeah. we... We figuratively die. Maybe we don't physically die, hopefully, but we die okay. inside, right? Maybe our personality, our, our drive, our motivation dies because we jump into a relationship that's not good, right? That's what I think about when I, when I hear this song. I really like this yeah. song. I like the message. I like the lyrics, right? Because... If you go down, see where it says here, guys, hearts will dream again, lungs will breathe in, wash away the sins, it's where it begins, feet won't fail you now, arms won't let you down, wash away your sins. This paragraph, the stanza. 
for yeah. you, is this I, positive or negative? What do you what what comes to mind when you? It is positive. It's positive. Yeah, I feel like it's positive too. It like it like hope. Exactly. Parents yeah. will dream. Right. It's like. We can dream again, like it's, okay, maybe things are really bad in the past with the relationship that we jumped into, but you know what? There's hope, yeah. right? We can forget the past. Wash away the sins for me means forget the past, right? The past is the past. Maybe we've done some, some bad things in the past. We want to think about the future now. Feet won't fail you now. Uh, there's an expression. I'm going to type this into the chat. This is an expression. Feet don't fail me now. Feet don't fail me now. This is a, an, an expression that means, you know what? I'm going to try to do something. I'm going to make an effort to do something. And and I, I don't want to fail. I'm going to try my best, right, to... Do something differently that I haven't done in the past. So feet, it's a figurative of language. It's not literal, but it means, you know, I'm going to try something that I'm not used to. And I'm going to do the best that I can. Okay. So yeah, so for me, this song says, you know, maybe we've jumped into relationships in the past. Maybe we've made some mistakes. But there's hope. And... There's always a chance for redemption that we can change, that we can do better in the future. And that's what I that's what I get from this song. This is a really good song. I like these the lyrics. And I like the the way they use questions, right? Look at all of the questions that are in the lyrics of this song. So like I think there are more questions or at least almost as many questions as there are statements. And it makes you reflect. Great. Cool song. Thanks, Leo, for uh, requesting the song. Any other final comments or questions? Leo, thanks for that song. I like it too much. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so this author, all his uh, has messages like this in all the songs. And so really good. Um, yeah, yeah, so check out this artist. Check it out. Very good. Uh, do you know when? How how recent or old is this song? I'm not familiar with this song. Is this uh, recent or is this an older song? Do you know? Yeah, it's recent. When uh, you're meeting is exactly when I'm meeting the song. Is it? Is it? A, uh, but it's a recent song. Do you know what year it was uh, released? Yes. What year? Um, no lo when when was this song uh, released by this this group? This song that we listened to. What year was it um, published uh, or released? A uh, few few years for I don't know maybe three years ago. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. Thank you, Leo, for that. Thanks, guys, for your comments. And a lot of good uh, use of figurative language uh, in that example. All right. Um, what I'd like to do, guys, now, uh, and again, I, I want to give you plenty of time for this next activity because I think it's a very important activity because I'm going to ask you, I want you to reflect on your experiences so far as a student taking classes 100% online. This is an adjustment, obviously, for your teachers. It's probably an adjustment for you as well. Um, we all have uh, challenges or faced with challenges with teaching and learning online. And I think this activity that I want to do today, I want to give you an opportunity to speak honestly about how you feel, what you are challenged with, and things that you like about your the current situation with regard to your classes in Prope. And so 
what I would like to do is share your reflections with your probate teachers. All right, so I want to give you an option to speak freely about what you think about your classes in general, right? This is um, a reflection about your how your uh, how your classes are are helping you with developing your English. But if you have challenges, you can also speak to those challenges. I would like for you to talk about things that are working for you that that you think, you know, maybe you weren't used to it, but you see that it, it helps you. But also, if there's some things that you find challenging that is not working for you, you can also speak respectfully about those as well. Okay, this is not about just complaining just for the sake of complaining. This is about trying to um, share what you feel about your, the current situation so that we, your teachers, all of Prope teachers, can better understand how we're doing, right? And if there are some changes that we need to make or things we need to talk about, this, I think, is going to be an exercise in, in that. So for today, I would like for us to... And I'm, I think I'm still sharing my screen. Uh, I'm going to share with you a link to a Flipgrid topic called Propate Reflection. And I've included a video. It's kind of a long video. It's about 15 minutes, and you don't have to watch the whole thing. But I was curious because as I'm a teacher at the university, I'm at home, obviously, and I'm teaching from, from home. But I also have two boys who are also going to school online. So we're all here at home, either taking a class, right, or giving a class. But I was curious because my boys are in a similar situation as you all. I asked them to reflect as well. And so I've included a link to uh, actually a video where my boys are also sharing a reflection as kind of an example. Now, you don't have to talk about what they talk about, of course, but it's just an example of a reflection of how they feel about taking classes 100% online, okay? So take a look at the video again. You don't have to watch the whole thing to get the general idea, um, but I wanted to provide you with an example of what you can say and what you can talk about. But think about your own situation. Please don't think of this as, don't speak for the whole group, okay? So use the pronoun I, talk in the first person, okay? Because this is a personal reflection about you, about your experiences and your perspective don't speak for the group. Don't say, we think this, we think that. This is all about what you think. Please upload this uh, to uh, the Flipgrid. I want you to, again, think and write out and prepare what you want to say. So if a mind map works for you, then complete a mind map. If you want to just write down a few notes and organize how you want to present your ideas, I would recommend that you do that. Maybe you want to write out an outline. Maybe you want to write out and speak about certain classes or certain domains, for example, grammar, listening and speaking, reading, writing, culture, and could be related to the classes. You know, there are many different ways that you can present your ideas. So I want you to reflect on not only what you want to say, but how you want to say it, the order that you want to present your ideas and write it down some, some way, somehow, so that it helps you to think about what you want to say. I don't want you to read it out loud. I would like for you to create, right, and speak about it. Um, I don't want you to write out the whole, the whole thing and just read it. Okay, try to 
you know, create your ideas and what you want to say based on your notes that you have for, for this reflection. Okay. But I really want to give you uh, basically an hour to complete this test because I want to give you plenty of time to really reflect deeply about this. The last thing I'll say is that this particular recording I set for five minutes. All right. All of the other videos that we've uploaded, there's been a limit of a minute and a half. So for this one, I would like for you to speak anywhere from three to five minutes, a little bit longer maybe than you're used to. But uh, I just want to give you a little bit more time to, to reflect. Okay, so try to speak between three to five minutes. The, the most you can speak is five minutes uh, for this particular topic in, in Flipgrid. All right, so uh, I'll, I'm going to remain online. Of course, if you guys have any other questions about, you know, anything, whatever, that's fine. Just jump right in, and uh, I'll, I'll an try to answer your questions here in class. But I'll go ahead and mute my mic. Go ahead and begin this activity. Watch the video plan, and go ahead and try to upload this for today in class. And then we'll come back. We'll reconvene at 940. We'll come back in class at 940 to close the class. Okay, are there any questions about this activity? No teacher. No teacher. No teacher. No? Okay, so I'll go ahead and mute my mic, guys. Go ahead and begin the activity. Of course, jump in if you have any questions, and then we'll come back at 940. All right? Okay, teacher. Sorry, what time, teacher? Uh, at 9.40. Okay, that's uh, usually okay. what time we come back. Uh, so I'm going to give you actually one hour completely, one hour. It's 8.41 right now. We'll come back at 9.40 to just to close the, the class and to answer any final questions that you have. Okay, teacher, thanks. You're welcome. All right, my friends, it's uh, about 9.40. I think we'll go ahead and conclude for today. Uh, just a reminder, we had a change for this week. We'll have our TOEFL practice tomorrow, Thursday, and on Friday at 8.15. I will begin, as I've done in the past, at 8 o'clock. I will make available the audio. So if you want to sign in at 8 o'clock and download the audio from the temp folder and have that on your computer and take the review um, from your computer that's fine if internet is a problem and uh, you have problems hearing or listening to the audio uh, in class, uh, you have that option. I will continue, of course, playing the audio so that you can listen to it during class. And uh, I uploaded also the approximate mm, I, score that you would get based on the percentage correct and... It's a little bit uh, confusing because the the uh, sheet that I uploaded is for a TOEFL uh, exam that has, I think, 50 questions. And I think you have only taken a review with around 36 or 37 questions or something, something like that. So basically, if you get a 50%, anywhere from 50 to 62% correct on your TOEFL listening review, you can assume a score of about 470 to 500, okay? This is an, an approximate score that you, that we would expect uh, students to have going into the first semester of the BA program. So think about the score that you typically receive. If you're below 50%, all right, I would really pay close attention to um, you know, how you're getting practice for listening, all right? I would recommend that you listen a lot to the recordings of our class, of course, but also just on your own listening uh, maybe to podcasts, maybe even additional podcasts, just really trying to get in as much listening as you can 
uh, to help you with this with the skill. The second thing I would recommend is that you try to find as many opportunities as possible to read in English. Reading and listening is really um, uh, list, uh, re reading and listening is are really the two skills that are going to help you most improve not only those skills but the rest of your skills as well. All right, so really the the receptive skills, reading and listening. Really try to do as much as possible. Reading above any skill is going to help you the most in the rest of the, the skills when uh, developing in English. Reading is going to help you a lot with vocabulary, of course, and just becoming familiar with the language. Um, but listening, since this is a listening speaking class, listening, of course, uh, you need to try to get as much practice as possible. Uh, let's see, Ben, could you write on the chat the link? To upload the video. Okay, uh, Carlos, are you asking about a Flipgrid? Yes, teacher. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought I uploaded it. Here we go. All right, here's the link. And remember the link, guys, the last part of the URL, that is also the code, the join code. So the first time that you enter, uh, sure. The first time that you enter into the Flipgrid um, topic, it's going to ask you for a code. And that code is always the the last, what is it, six or so digits? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digits uh, of the URL. So it's in this case, BB31459E. Okay, that'll be the code. All right, so if you guys uh, try to upload your video before tomorrow's class, uh, tomorrow we'll start with our review of our TOEFL score, our TOEFL, TOEFL practice. Hopefully we won't lose the um, the exam. We had problems, uh, as you know, on Monday. So hopefully we can avoid those for tomorrow. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if you're having problems with uh, with the Internet... Uh, I'm trying to record today's session, so uh, just always get into the habit, guys. If you have problems with the internet, especially during class, um, you know, hopefully you'll be able to access the class. I haven't uploaded yesterday's class because I'm trying to bring in all the group work that we did yesterday. Uh, group eight, please go ahead and try to upload your your video. I still don't see that, so I will try to include it if if you can upload it here shortly. I'm going to try to finish uh, this afternoon and uh, so I can upload yesterday's class. And then obviously I'll try to upload today's class. But anytime you guys have problems with the internet, obviously check out the recordings. Ask, send me a, a message if you miss something or um, if you have questions about any of the activities that we're doing in class. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.